Welcome back. The house is packed. Daily Guide, the Ghanaian Times, Daily Graphic, uh, the Business Finder, the publisher, all of them ready this morning. Now, the Ghanaian Times is uh, giving a health alert and Cobra Basin contaminated with fecal matter. That's a big one there. Uh, the area around there is not in good condition at all. Daily Guide says NDC stores vigilante talks. That's a big one. The Finder, Business Finder says banks profit up. 38.9 percent the publisher wild blaze storms court accuses shrads of playing uh, politics uh, daily graphic carries the atl story and says it is so struggling government 17 million cd bailout exhausted those are some of the stories i have this morning my guest to do the talking to my extreme left a member of the mpp steam uh kofi Amiya. he represents uh, the mpp from afar kofi welcome back Thank you, sir. You are here for the, uh, the yeah, Astra uh, oh, okay. celebration mm -hmm. of homecoming service. Okay. Grateful. Grateful for your time with us. Yes. And uh, the acting general secretary of the convention, the 70-year-old convention people's party, uh, Kabila, James Kwabna Bonfes. Yeah, good morning, too. Good morning, Hope you're doing great. I'm good. God has been good. Thankful for your time with us. And MP for Tamongo, a member of the NDC. Good morning, too. Good morning. Hope you're doing morning. great. Good morning. Good morning. The people of Tamongo are fine. Inshallah, by his grace. Great. Through the hard economic conditions, <laughs> we are surviving by his grace. <laughs> All right, let's start our conversation with this uh, vigilante talk. Daily Guide has a story that says that the national organizer <coughs> of the NPP uh, says it is hypocritical of the opposition NDC to demand the inclusion of the justice and the short commission's findings in the ongoing uh, anti-vigilantism roadmap. According to him, <coughs> the NDC boycotted the commission uh, when it was set up. And so uh, it is strong or it is hard to believe why the party wants the findings to be incorporated in the anti-vigilantism roadmap. Uh, Mr. Uh, Samir Wuku said that they did raise the matter, but we find it very hypocritical because this was the political party that openly and officially said they were boycotting the commission and they didn't want to have anything to do with the commission, he said. Adding, they subsequently issued a statement asking their members not to cooperate with the commission. But today, the NDC wants to use the report as a prerequisite before moving to forward. Um, he goes on to say uh, that uh, the, the NDC appears skeptical about the process, the success of the dialogue between the NPP and the Peace Council, together with other stakeholders trying to find ways to end political vigilantism in the country. Uh, Mr. C. Dwinkachia, who was addressing uh, the fourth session of the dialogue series at Pediasi, uh, claimed except of the roadmap vindicated their position on the dialogue. And so the party is asking that the report be made part of whatever conversation uh, that the stakeholders would have. So that's the story. Um, Kofi, welcome. Let me start right. with you. Um, <coughs> the, the, the MPP feels that uh, the, the report should not be part of the conversation. Is that it? Is that a thinking of the MPP or the national organizer? Well, well uh, um, he, speaks, he speaks as a national organizer, so uh, once uh, he's uh, <coughs> referring to the NDC, he may be speaking on behalf of the party. Yeah. Uh, Bright, good morning, and good morning to my honorable mm -hmm. co panelist. Let me say good morning to the good people of this country as well. I bring them greetings from the Ghana Permanent Mission to the United Nations and then the Consulate General in New York. Um, I'm home for the diaspora celebration of homecoming. We believe that it's important mm -hmm. that Ghanaians living abroad should come and contribute to nation building. We, there's a pool of expertise, people with resources that can come back home to do something for the forward uh, movement of this country. Um, I, I am of the opinion that, uh, uh, um, and I support the precedent, that the issue of vigilantism is something that we should nip in the back. It's something that has not been helpful to this country. Um, it just did not start uh, with, with this administration. It has started way back before. And the present position to ensure that at the end of the day, we should have a roadmap that will <coughs> stop mitigate this action once and for all. For me, it's, it's a call in the right direction. The attitude of the NDC has not been in good faith from day one. Uh, clearly, they have demonstrated that they are not interested in these committees' um, um, sittings and the outcome of it. Mm. They are interested in how the continuous reportage of uh, um, talking about security, the insecurity in this country, just to gain a political score. For me, clearly, 
um, um, this stonewalling, this idea of bringing in, suggesting we should enlarge the, the numbers, we should enlarge the committee, we should bring, to the extent that they were even saying we should bring market women and all of that, to me clearly demonstrate that they are not willing to ensure that there will be a roadmap in stopping this particular activity that is um, um, worrying this country. So clearly, um, I, I side with um, um, the organizer of my party, Samia Oku, that the NDC is not showing good faith. They are not ready to ensure let that. Me, we, let we, me put we, it on at record. The end of the day. Kofi, sorry, I have to cut mm -hmm. it. Let me put it on record that Mr. Samir Wuku is not speaking as Mr. Samir Wuku. If you read the story, there's a quote here. Now, this is, I want to read it so that it, we are clear that he's speaking on behalf of the MPP. Now, the quote says that they did raise the matter, but we, this is Samir Wuku talking, mm -hmm. so we cannot refer to him. It yeah, is the NDP. Okay, so let's. So let's it's move. the position of the MPP mm -hmm. that the NDC is stonewalling. It is the position of the MPP that the NDC doesn't want this to end. They want this to go on and play out. So that at the end of the day, the impression will be created that there is insecurity in this country, which is there is none at the end of the day. So they can continue to do all that they can. The good people of this country understand and appreciate mm. that the president of the day, His Excellency, Nanadu Danko Ekufuado, want peace for this country. He wants to ensure that at the end of the day, nobody take the law into their own hands and do whatever they want to do. We've had instances of by-elections where there have been some form of violences here and there, but there was no committee set up to investigate into it. We had talency. Even the president did not comment on it. Even we had an interior minister saying violence began violence, and he wasn't even sanctioned. He endorsed the actions that went on. We had a Tiwa. No committee was set up. But this one, a committee has been set up. And the president has made a bold and emphatic decision that at the end of the day, I do not want this in this country. Mm. And I am of the opinion that it would have inured to the benefit of the NDC to ensure that at the end of the day, these processes end so that at the end of the day, we have lasting solution to these particular activities. That, for me, it's, it's not proper. Because would, would that lasting solution not uh, need to include this, the commission's report, that's the party's position. That report, there has been a committee or a commission mm. set up to investigate into it. They have done their job. Let's sleep in dogs lie. Let's look into the future. Because at the end of the day, I am of the opinion that we, we, we will have a whole, a holistic view as to the way forward in solving this issue. Without the commission's report. At the end of the day. So then we should go back and talk about telling see, then we should go back and talk about Aitiwa. We should go back to talk about Ododiodiodio. We should talk about all the other by elections, violences, or disturbances but that we, has occurred. We don't have reports for that. Is the Ayo West will go to the committee report? But what happened? Well, we no, we know what happened. There, but we come we, we know what, what happened. We have police reports. I don't know. Don't, yeah. don't we know instances of what happened in the. Uh, um, there are instances where stories of previous violence were 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 reported, were reported. You know what exactly what happened? At the end of the day, the position of the NDC has been to continue to be they want to stop. They have this. That's why in previous instances where there were instances in violations, never to create both positions to ensure that they, they were never in the back. They were never, never did that. Okay. But we mean that. That demonstrates that we believe we are sensitive to the plight of the people of the country. We believe that concern should matter. Okay. And this vigilance is a matter that concerns Ghana. We are taking the decision and both sides ensure that they, they stop this. Which and this is falling. Back to you. So, uh, to Akil, he says we need that support in the conversation we're having with this council. Yeah, thank you very much. Good morning to uh, especially the people of the Congo constituency. My brother, I want to start from right. you see, this is a president who benefited vigilance. Because we're in the country, we suffer from the missionary brought train. The MP vigilance, the deportees, the press, then the flag bearer made it clear he did trust the national security, the police, and as such, he came to this people. He made 
Amen. So he did it. So this is the president who benefited so much from vigilantism and vigilantism. And therefore, we'll do everything to prepare them. They have become a shareholders in NP. And you know that they when we won power. They went on the page. Both the uh, uh, polling booth and all that. And the German MP, they were protecting the government party. Didn't contribute. The second point to point that the vigilantes are shareholders in MP. The National Security Commander in the region was sacked by the vigilantes, arrested and sent to court. They came and vandalized the court and freed. When it was sent to court, the attorney general and an and prosecutor, they were freed. That tells me that the vigilantes, they are shareholders, MPP, that they have no evidence to prosecute. Uh, oh, we have to do it. Okay. Now, right. my brother said to line up uh, that you are telling uh, to they are two different uh, scenarios. In politics and every constituency, you have some few polls where party supporters might engage in <coughs> some trouble. <coughs> Therefore, you have the opportunity to resolve it. I was so work on. It's not a secret operations. Vigilance is required to the national security. It has gone there to beat people, to shoot people, to cause so much harm. So it's not a party party. It is. But I so was gone. We're gone. It must be very clear. There was something like ND supporters against MPP supporters. That wasn't there. Therefore, you are not reading that one at one part of you. But let me tell you something. What brought about the setting up of the commission is as a result of Ayawaso West Wogan. What emanated in this dialogue or coming up with an issue is as a result of the Ayawaso West Wogan. What brought out the vigilante bill is as a result of the Ayawaso was working. It is something that has triggered all this thing. And now you want us to treat them separately. Oh, the commission reports should be separate. What the parties are doing should be separate. The vigilante bills should be separate. They must be input emanating from the, the commission and cut across. Two, the issue of NDC not taking part. The issue is to say, but they said they will not block any member who wished to appear before the commission. And that is why Honorable Sam George had the opportunity to go. They never stop anybody. Two, the statement made by Samuel Oku on behalf of MPP is very, very unfortunate. He has taken this thing as a private matter for MPP alone. It doesn't belong to Ghanaians. If this is so, in the 1992 co co uh, constitution, when we were putting it up, MPP boycotted. Why are they using it to govern today? You boycotted. Please let me go. You boycotted the 1992, putting up the 1992 constitution. There was no MPP. MPP. What I mean is that no, they, no, boy, no, they boycotted. The, but okay. there was no yes. MPP as a party. So, okay, so uh, in the drafting of clarified. The then members of the MPP boycotted it and said it was yes, made up of farmers. No, it was made up of farmers and market women. And I'm, I can just see directly my brother has gone back to that place. And then farmers, butchers put it up. You are benefiting from it today. When my brother was talking of this, I want to come to What the MPP wanted was, hey, NDC, only MPP. It was the NDC who suggested that we needed certain civil society <laughs> organizations to be part. They resisted it. They eventually brought in these civil society organizations who are working tirelessly to ensure that we achieve a goal. 
And in doing that, they are still dragging. And one critical issue that MDC raised was that you cannot recruit your vigilantes into the national security. And then after you have done that, you say, let's abandon the, it. When you knew very well, as at the time of discussing it, you were training militia at the uh, castle. Well, the French militia has denied anything like that. The, they, have, they have denied, but that is a fact. It's left with me to assess and judge from my own. But so, two, my brother said the, the NDC wanted so many people to take part. That bill is not only for NDC and PPO. When venture, uh, anger is vend ventured out, it is not only party. Innocent people, foreigners, can be caught up in that. And therefore, everybody must be interested. So I'm so sad that my brother said, NDC asked that so many people to come, including market women. Market women are relevant in the decision, peacemaking process of this country. We must take that. Two, when the markets were being burnt by assets, who were those affected? They must be part to be an integral part of the, the process. So don't, okay, wrap up for don't me. look at them as if they have no any other issue. I feel that it is very, very important that the uh, ML Shaw's Commission's report must be part of the decision making in arriving at this. The general secretary of our party, the great General Mosquito, made it clear that the, a technical committee was to be set up so that all of them come up with their inputs to be captured in the report. They were told, oh, soon they will be setting up and all that. Before they realized there was a report from the chemi uh, technical committee without input from all these uh, relevant uh, stakeholders. I think that President Nana <coughs> is stop dressing this issue. Deep down, he has, he has no belief in disbanding vigilantism in this country. He has no belief. Grateful. Kabila, to, to include or not to include? It is funny sometimes when you listen to the way we discuss our problems in this country. And I must begin by saying that the first error in appreciating this problem was to give it an euphemized name of vigilantism. In fact, we are dealing with hooliganism, lawlessness, and impunity. That is the name. And I think it was Professor Henry Tamensa Bunsu who uh, before the, I mean, as part of the, this, uh, the, I mean, short, the I mean, short commission said that these guys are hooligans. They are militia. People have disagreed with her use of the term militia, but that's what they are. And I agree with her. So to even attempt to craft a law and call it vigilante bill. I made a presentation on behalf of the Convention People's Party before the Parliamentary Select Committee on Legislation, uh, the Committee on Constitutional and Legal Affairs. And I made this point clear. Now, you see, the call by Samir Oku on behalf of the MPP, I doubt if it is in agreement or it is coming from the entire so that's MPP. that's the party's position. Yes, okay. I doubt, because I have spoken to some MPP people, and I think they think differently. It cannot be. In the first place, what was the motive for setting up the Emil Short Commission? The CI establishing the commission was brought before parliament. Mm. It was an afterthought anyways. The commission itself, its setting up, was an afterthought. But better late than never. What was the reason? The narrative that accompanied the setting up of the Emil Short Commission was that it was to deal with all previous incidents of so-called uh, vigilantism which I say appropriately must be hooliganism, lawlessness, and impunity. And that they were to incorporate what happened in Talency, in Chiripone, in uh, uh, the, the, the list that you made. It was to incorporate all that. That is why, as a part of the commission's work, 
they invited experts like Dr. Christiani to give them a recount of how some of these things have happened. They also took into witness um, um, somebody from CDD who have done a research as to some of the things that lead to the impunity and violent related issues with, uh, I mean, uh, in elections. So the Emil Short Commission's report actually is a consolidation of all previous acts of impunity related to elections. And that's what must be understood by those who are, who are disagreeing with their call to put uh, the Emil Short Commission report into the public domain or have it as part of the discussion. Moving on from there, right, you know that this, me, these meetings that are ongoing at the uh, mediation of the Peace Council, the Peace Council. Where an, was as a result of an invitation by His Excellency the President mm -hmm. during the State of the Nation address, which call I disagree with because I think I've said it privately somewhere. What the President was suggesting was that we should perhaps one day call for a meeting with all armed robbers in this country and discuss with them how to end armed robbery. Or, better still, have an, a meeting with rapists and thieves who steal from the public purse as to how to end thievery and raping in this country. Are you not simplifying? No, that's exactly what it is. James, you are. And I'll tell you how. The issues of hooliganism, impunity, violence related to elections in this country are always as a result of breaking or breaching the laws of this country. The problem has been that we have lacked the political will to enforce our laws or we have interfered with the work of law enforcement agencies such as the police. And that's why vigilantes have power. I'm saying that they are not vigilantes. Okay. Oh, oh, These oh, are criminals, okay. hooligans. Uh, that's why they Call them what they are. Okay. Don't give them an infamous name because they are not. Look, vigilantism is a call to national duty. Okay? And I will take but you to the Constitution. To uphold the law. Article 2 of this, this uh, country's Constitution, Article 2, says that any person, Article 2 1, any per, a person who alleges that an, enact, an, an enactment, anything contained in or done under the authority of that or any other enactment, B, any act or omission of any person is inconsistent with or is in contravention of a provision of this constitution, may bring an action in the Supreme Court for a declaration to that effect. That is a call to vigilantism. Move from there. Let's go to Article. Three, okay, Article Three of this uh, uh, this Constitution, clauses, I think four, four, five, and six. Four reads: All citizens of Ghana shall have the right and duty at all times. A to defend this Constitution and in particular. To resist any person or group of persons seeking to commit any acts referred to in clause 3 of this article. B. Do all in their power to restore this constitution after it has been suspended, overthrown, or abrogated as referred to in clause 3 of this article. In fact, 5 is the most important part. Any person or group of persons who suppresses or resists the suspension overthrow or abrogation of this constitution as referred to in clause 3 of this article. Commit no offense. Look, vigilantism is a national duty. What people do at elections or during elections are not acts of vigilantism but acts of recklessness, impunity and abuse of, 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 of the constitution. Let's call them that. So you see Now, now mm. when the president made this invitation, remember he first said that they, it was going to it should be done between the NDC and the MPP. Remember? Mm. Then we saw that it was not going to work. Then this and MPP realized that it wasn't going to work. That was when the Peace Council was invited to step in. 
The Peace Council, after in, um, the initial meetings, realized that, no, it cannot just be about NDC and MPP, because this matter is not NDC and MPP matter. As far as I'm concerned, those meetings are all a clear waste of our public resources, our time and money. And I think what Sami is saying here confirms that this thing is leading us nowhere. Otherwise, why? Why did we rush to introduce even a bill when all these tests were taking place? One, the commission's report is not out. We don't know what recommendations they have made. There are only snippets of it. As to whether they were even going to recommend uh, legislation or not is, is, is another matter. Mm. Two, the, these uh, meetings were taking place, and yet we, we rushed to introduce a bill before parliament called vigilantism bill or whatever it was. So you see, if you sum them up, and I want to conclude mm. that this is not a matter between NDC and MPP. It cannot be solved by NDC and MPP because the empirical evidence available is that NDC and MPP separately and collective have shown that they don't have the capacity to deal with impunity and lawlessness related to elections in this country. So how are you inviting people who have shown their incompetence, their inability to deal with the problem to go and, and discuss how to resolve that problem? I want to suggest that it will take Ghanaians mm. Okay, the people of this country, collective, understanding that it will take us to listen to each other, what we say, and the good in what each one of us is saying, to work towards deconstructing the over uh, aggregation of power in the executive under this constitution 1992, that we will have proper and true checks and balances where parliament will be true parliament. Exercises, exercising its oversight without having anything to do with the executive. Where the judiciary will be empowered to work and adjudicate without looking above who is watching them to promote them or demote them. That for me is a clear way to go. Okay. And you can't do that with this deceptive constitution 1992, which is the mother so, of so all the problems so, so, of this country. So that's where the problem is. That's where the problem is. <laughs> okay, grateful. Right. Uh, 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 Kofi, give me a minute. I I'll come back to you. Honorable uh, the what about the excuse that the constitution allows the president a certain time frame within which to, to let out this report? Perhaps that is why we want to hold on the report until... Uh, is that not a legitimate? Argument? It is legitimate. It is within a time frame. Mm. And as a president, once that thing has triggered several, which you think is necessary, mm. you must make sure you complete this. This becomes the input for all the other ones that you want to do. I think when the bill came to parliament, it was stated in a short committee's report. Mm. But the report wasn't made available. And the members of parliament raised that issue, more especially the Honorable Inu Safiseni. He made it that without this report, it will be difficult to conclude on the vigilante bill what we need. We need input from the general public, civil society organization. And the report is critical. Mm. So you could see that that report is running through. And that is why I said that if you, as a president, you want to treat each of them separate, then we'll arrive at nothing. Because it must be holistic, as he said. Being holistic means they must integrate. One, the end product of this becomes the, the input for that, the raw material for that. This becomes the raw material for that. But if you want us to treat each of them separately, the report is separate, the dialogue is separate, and the bill is separate. I don't think we'll end up anywhere. I don't think. And this call to include other stakeholders was made by our general secretary that NDC MPP alone cannot resolve that issue. And we must know that vigilantes has vigilantism has gone beyond lawbreakers? Lawbreakers. <laughs> no, what is the meaning? What is the meaning of lawbreakers? When national security in in vehicles designed in national security claim that national security uh, executive accepted they are part of national security. It's an abuse of the law. 
and had gone to do this, then you'd say who, uh, they, we shouldn't call them vigilant. I believe they that are guys. The, those people, yes. they, these people have come out to say they gave them the instruction. Yes, but they are lawbreakers. What I'm saying is that yes. it has gone because beyond. Coming to you. And let me tell you, if we don't take time, <laughs> we waste our time, at the end of the day, we'll end nowhere. And that is why I've ended That's my this by saying that mm. this issue of vigilantism, the president in his well, real listen, do not believe in it. Mm. He wants to top dress it for people to say that, okay, he has tackled his MPP. You cannot shift the blame on NDC. Sorry. Okay. Okay. You cannot shift the blame on NDC. Okay, I'm grateful. Let me get Kofi quickly come in and then we'll yes, So, first of all, the president, Leonardo Danko Ekufuado, never and has never benefited from violence. In fact, what he has benefited from is that he, 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 he allowed the processes to work. At the time when his statement or he, his actions or inactions could have degenerated into something chaotic, he went to the Supreme Court. No. Do you get it? That's what he did. Okay, if there's a party, if there's any individual that has benefited from political or from any violence, it's you, Honorable. Mm -hmm. Because John Dramani Mahama, the ex-president, told us at a very charged atmosphere that your party was born out of violence. That you are more violent than any political party in this country. Yes. So when we are talking about any political party that has been a beneficiary of any violence in this country, it is your party. In fact, your party came into being through the barrel of the gun. You killed people before you came to power. You kill people yeah, before you establish and stamp the authority on us. So let me no, we are not going back. Yes. I am trying to make the uh, point. Yeah, let's let, let, let yeah. stay. Let, let's we stay are focused. Focused. Yes. We are staying in it. Yes. yes. So the point simply is this. Then talking about the point that I made about the market women, I am saying that it is an attempt by the NDC, okay, to start the whole process so that it will play out continuously. We will talk about violence. Today we are talking about it, aren't we? But the, 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 the committee or the body that is looking into this bill has been representative enough. Has it not been? James here sitting here has gone there to make a statement. No, no. Hold on. No, no. <laughs> you haven't been there. No, he's no, not sorry. been to the committee. <laughs> but I am, I am saying All that it has been. So I'm, I'll take that. I am saying that it has been representative enough. The Peace Council, who are they representing? Isn't that the ordinary Ghanaian? It was okay. not the president's suggestion. Okay. Okay. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But the president had good faith. Yes. yes. At the end of the day, Brian, let me make this point. And then Kabila makes the point that we are being deceptive. The yes. MPP is not being deceptive. We are demonstrating so, so Kofi, that for indeed you, we want for you, peace the, in this country. The, the commission's report enjoy. is not necessary in this. Right. At the end of the day, what is necessary mm. is that we move forward and that crime will be crime. Can, can, can we do that without the commission's report? Of course. Okay. Of course. Right. And we will move forward and it will be established mm -hmm. that anybody so, so that commits any form of crime will be punished, will be brought to book. Okay. As simple as it is. <laughs> I'm right. grateful. Let, let, let I Kabila you come would, I thought you would ask him, mm -hmm. you would ask him what he, I don't know whether he was in the permanent, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, residence um, office in the UN. But if he was here, mm. what narrative accompanied the, semi, the setting up of the Emil Short Commission? <laughs> no, but I want you to I ask him. We are not okay. there, Modi. No, I, 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 it's important that we're having a conversation. I think we have that. We, we, we have, we have discussed that I'm, I'm, here. I'm, so saying that, I'm saying this because, you see, if we don't have conversations mm. in this country born out of sincerity... So the we, president we, was not sincere? Because you allow him. You see? Uh, allow him. We, we, I don't have a lot of time today. Uh, Kabila, please go on. Look, there is a problem on our hand. The problem has been with weak or poor or ineffective law enforcement. We also have conflicting laws in this country. We have a legal architecture which itself is so deceptive that you can't live a sincere political life in this country. And that's the Constitution 1992. It is the root of all the you know, major, major problems. And look, the confirmation. Go and read the uh, Constitutional Review Commission's report. And the statements that former President Kufo, former mm. President Mills, former President Mahama, and President Akufuado have made about this constitution. And tell me, 
that it is not the problem. Uh, 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 help is no. coming. Uh, we are pretending about it. Oh, Every constitution needs a review. Yeah. And that is why President Mills started the review. And he this, ended this country, uh -huh. this country shouldn't have been where we are. If not for the NDC. It is because of your ancestors. In 1996. No, no let, let's let, let's move on. Let's stay. They in mess up this country. Of time. They mess up this country. If not, wouldn't have been where. And it has to take uh, President uh, Rawlings to put the country back on track. And for 20 years, please, over 20 years, we have democratic, uh, a, a democracy lost, going I'm on. Lost. So go and ask your ancestors. They will tell you. Ask for Rawlings, that's not true. Now, let us not Rawlings has been in this country worse. But what I'm saying is that his ancestors mess up. Rawlings has been in this country worse. But what I'm saying is that his ancestors mess up the system. How? If not the nineteen ninety six, that I agree, that I agree with you. And Rollins made it worse. Can, can with the one, no, I disagree. And Rollins made it we worse made with the one. Can can we we and NDC, we are proud coming from a revolutionary era. We don't have any problem with the uh, being born out of PNDC. We are proud of our founder. What is wrong? If you hadn't messed up in nineteen sixty six and plunged this country into mess. He, President Rollins wouldn't have needed to come and clean up this. Okay, city. let's wrap so you up must on that. Uh, 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 Rollins drew uh, inspiration from the six. Rollins drew inspiration from the six. He was a mess up. 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 He was the MPP is saying back and mess this country. Is, is surprising. That vigilante bill or, or what the dialogue is not their personal property. Mm. That they can think that, oh, you said you won't take part and therefore you shouldn't be part of it. You shouldn't ask any question. In the first place, if you think that we said we won't take part in the Mel Schultz, uh, Commission of Inquiry, why did you invite us to sit and talk okay. about vigilantism? Okay. If you think you should have gone okay. ahead, uh, unfortunately, we are wasting uh, money yes. on it. I, I, I that wish dialogue is a waste of the public purse, <laughs> and they I should stop it. I wish they we had had time. We have it's to a waste of everybody's time this money. morning. Uh, I, I wish we had had time to take a look at the uh, majority minority clash on the funding of senior high school oh, and then sorry. the Kosovo uh, Tech Satin. But we're hosting two members of parliament on. Uh, a committee of government assurances this month. So we'll wrap up the conversation. Gentlemen, sorry, we have to wrap Thank up at this time. Kofi Amaya is a member of the NPP's team. Uh, James uh, Kwabina Bonfe, Acting General Secretary of the CPP. Honorable Adam Mutawakilu is MP for Damon. We're a member of the NDC. I'm grateful for your Thursday morning. Most grateful. Uh, sure we'll have more time for more conversation.